Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Happy Groundhog's Day to everybody, February 2nd here, and we're taking a look at the infrared satellite. And by the way, if you did not hear, the groundhog did not see a shadow, so apparently there is going to be an early spring. So we'll see how that develops. El Nino year, probably not that bad of a guess, really. But anyway, taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery with the Doppler radar overlay, you can see these showers moving up and across the area this morning, and mainly just some light rain here, maybe some snow for the higher peaks here as this comes across the area and we're going to wrap some moisture back around for idaho montana some of the bc rockies here and a little clip in northeast washington as well as we go through the next couple of days then we'll take a look at a system that's trying to drop down out of the northwest that could be a snowmaker here for some of the mountains here in the pacific northwest more on that here as we go through the video you can see there is this winter storm watch in effect for some places down into california medford national weather service actually covers some portions of northern california so i thought i'd show that and you can see the i-5 corridor going back and forth could be affected. You can see Mount Shasta City and there's weed and Snowman Summit right there. And now taking a look at the event total snowfall for this weekend across Idaho, Montana, and some of Northeast Washington. You can see Lookout Pass on I-90 4 to 6 inches. This is Saturday through Sunday morning here and it could be affecting, like I mentioned, uh, I-90 and Highway 20 there. And a little bit of snowfall trying to make its way into some of the North Cascades, but generally less than an inch expected. Here's the snow returning Friday night through Saturday and this is for Western Montana. I believe this was Missoula actually if I'm correct but you can see 8 to 12 inches of new snow in the mountains not a bad snowmaker out there I mean definitely we will take it and this is uh, all the way on through Sunday February 4th here we go with the North American model and this is you know this morning and we're looking at the precipitation moving up and across the area you can see the showers kind of on the wane here today there's still gonna be some shower activity across the Washington Oregon coast kind of bubbling around there as you can see our decay and low pressure sag south to join up with another storm system that's gonna impact California and eventually try to spread some moisture back up over the Pacific Northwest. I'll show you some of that here in a moment, but you can see the showers going on here as we go all the way in through Saturday morning. And then you can see that moisture returning with this trough across the West, trying to bubble back in towards the BC Rockies and clipping some of Northeast Washington as well. And then we'll scroll all the way off into Sunday morning. Then you can see some of that moisture riding up from the South at that next system. More on that here as we go. But looking at a wider view of things here, we have Alaska, Washington, Oregon, Again, we're looking at 18,000 feet or 500 millibars. You got the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. There goes our system kind of weakening and moving down to the south can emerge and develop into a quite a strong storm for California. And again, that'll try to spread some moisture back up over some of the Oregon Cascades. And then what we're watching here next is this system dropping down out of the northwest as we go through Tuesday night into Wednesday. This could be a snowmaker here for us across the Pacific Northwest. So it's kind of a, a nice looking, little bit of an upgrade here. The European not quite as dramatic with the intrusion of that upper level uh, system into the region here, but we'll watch it. As you can see, we got another lobe swinging around that as well. And that's about 144 hours out or it would be Wednesday night. So yeah, we got some potential with that one here. And this is looking at that a little bit closer. Here we go with the low pressure system dropping down the coastline. There goes that storm spinning some of that moisture back up over us. And then here goes the next system as we go towards the end of the run here you can kind of see that low pressure developing there would bring some cooler air in here and maybe some lower snow levels across the mountain areas as you know that atmospheric river in the last few days has been very harsh on our snowpack here we're going to look at some of that data as we go towards the end of the video as well we need to start rebuilding that taking a look at the gfs so this is the zero z run this was last night's run low pressure sinks down we're going to go ahead and scroll off into the future here and you can see it spreading this moisture back up over the pacific northwest trying to even get some of the washington Cascades as we go through Sunday into Monday and then we look off into the future and you can see that impulse moving down here and potentially bringing some of that snowfall here as we go through Tuesday night into Wednesday and then another system drops down looks like Oregon and California on the latest runs here so we'll watch those at least that's something off into the future which could give us some snowfall here in the Pacific Northwest looking at the daily max two meter temperature you can see again for Seattle look at 54 52 for Portland here so you know not the lofty temperatures we were at a few days ago but still you know fairly warm above average and then you can see as we go through saturday dropping down more towards average there and kind of keeping it that way as we go on through the extended forecast and then you know maybe some of that cooler air trying to get down in here but nothing too crazy as you can see pretty typical for this time of year now looking at SeaTac for the month so 
If we drop down here, you can see after this very cold air that we had, look at some of these temperatures well below average as we went through the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. And then we started to warm up and we really made a run to try to get back towards normal at the end of the month there. Pretty impressive. We only finished the, a month 1.2 degrees below normal, which is actually quite impressive with just how much cold air we had around here. So it just shows you the power of that heat at the end of the run there. But we finished about 41.6 there, and that's 1.2 degrees below normal. And you can also see a lot of other interesting stuff here as well. It kind of tells you a lot of good information, greatest 24-hour total. And if you look up here, you can see present weather. You can see when you see the 8, that's haze. When you see a 2, that's dense fog. So it's just kind of a, a nerdy way to look at what kind of weather you had during the month. You had a thunderstorm on the 6th. We had a thunderstorm on January 9th. You had the freezing rain on the 16th and 17th there as well with that 6. And yeah, interesting stuff there. And we did finish the month above average precipitation wise, about 0.53 above average to be exact. And if we look at February so far, you can see the average high for this time of year is right about 49 degrees. And as we go through the month and get towards the end of the month here, February 28th and 29th, we average about 52 degrees here. So that slow and arduous climb back towards some more respectable temperatures. And you can see our normal precipitation in inches goes from about 0.15 about 0.13 gradual decline there as well so we're starting off the month a little bit above average temperature wise and snow tell as you know we've had this atmospheric river and we've been quite warm at the upper elevations and we're not doing too hot here across the state so we really need to get some systems back in here at least we've got something coming probably tuesday wednesday but you know we'll, we'll look at that it's still only Friday right now. And this is Oregon. You know, we've kind of calmed things down here. We were above average for a lot of the locations, and now we are below average here. And we lost another couple of clicks off some of these readings. And this is Idaho as well. And this is February 2nd. So, yeah, hopefully we can start rebuilding some of that. This is Mount Aerosmith in British Columbia. I want to show you this. Look at the snow depth was up towards 109 centimeters and look at the decline in the snowpack from January 26th all the way down towards February 1st. You got all the way back down towards what is this? I mean, you're talking about 50 some odd centimeters here. So you lost a huge portion of the snowpack for some of the areas across British Columbia. And this is where Mount Aerosmith is across Vancouver Island. So, you know, especially some of the lower elevations really hit hard in this snowpack loss. And this is Mount Cayley. Check it out. Over 180 centimeters, actually about, you know, you're up towards 184 here. And you went down all the way below down towards 110 centimeters. So very disruptive event for the snowpack. And you can see that Mount Cayley is right here. Whistler just off to the east there. So yeah, interesting stuff across British Columbia. And uh, you can see the last few days we've been tracking this. It was 36, 35 yesterday and 34% today. So not good news with that big uh, warm air mass we've been having. But check out the drought monitor here. Looks like Washington mostly drought free. Just a little bit of moderate drought clipping the northeast. A little bit of severe there and just across the Cascades a little bit of that action. And the Oregon Cascades some moderate drought right now. And just so you guys know here, just because it shows drought doesn't mean there's something necessarily wrong. Drought is a normal cycle of our climate here. So you don't want to get too alarmed when you see some drought conditions. And hopefully that snowfall coming this weekend can really help out some of those conditions across Idaho and Montana as well. And this was put out January 31st. I want to show you this monthly temperature outlook. You can kind of see for January, or actually for February, sorry, you can see the Pacific Northwest is scheduled to be above average and our monthly precipitation outlook not too hot here as we go through the month of february but you know we'll, we'll see how that goes this is portland january 24 review check it out average temperature even after all that cold and very cold temperatures actually for a while we're only 1.6 below average here with 40.3 and you can see the precipitation look at that 4.4 inches above normal and of course the warmest day on the 29th and the coldest day back on january 13th here's a story look at this actually 1.5 above average here for the month and look at the precipitation a nice rain making month there january was 15.6 16 inches of rain at 4.57 above normal and uh, the coldest was 24 on January 13th and 14th all the way out towards the ocean there. This is Salem. Look at that 
cold is 16, warm is 66. Very nice. And uh, right about average there, actually. So, you know, just a 0.2 below and above average with the precipitation as well. And this is Eugene. Again, above average with the precip there. You can see the coldest 19 Fahrenheit and almost two degrees above average for Eugene, Oregon. I mean, look at that day on January 28th, 69 degrees. Very impressive. And if you want a nice, affordable home weather station, record all this crazy weather we get here across Pacific Northwest. Click on that link down below to save 10% off i highly recommend the station for the price it does exceptionally well ultrasonic anemometer haptic rain gauge got uv index and it's very nice showing you the ambient light and the solar radiation as well uh lightning detection system if i didn't mention that also so anyway um yeah click on the link down below to save 10 percent off if you want one of those and yeah here's the wider view of things here kind of showing our decaying low dropping down here emerging with that subtropical and tropical moisture and really get a hammer california here some of that hopefully can spread up across some of the cascades here washington oregon and bring in some meaningful snowfall and hopefully we can get that northwest system as we go through tuesday and wednesday to drop some snow with it as well no promises just yet. Still looking a little ways out there, but we'll continue to watch that and break it down day by day. Hope you guys are liking these videos. I'm going to do a live stream tonight here on the California upcoming weather here because this is a pretty dynamic storm and there's some pretty intense outcomes possible with that system. So if you guys want to join me for that tonight, it should be between six and seven o'clock tonight, the live stream. Hopefully you guys, uh, I'll see some of you guys then. Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, we'll do this again tomorrow, daily briefing, and I will talk to you guys then.